conclusion, for the foregoing reasons, the court concludes that as a legal matter, the probable cause has been presented to support the charge in the criminal complaint. Accordingly, it's the court's obligation to bind defendant over to the circuit court to stand trial on that charge in order binding defendant. Well, this will save, I guess this will save the town a riot, maybe. Whatever other horror Benjamin Crump might be able to scare up. But it doesn't strike me as justice. It doesn't strike me as due process law. It strikes me as uh, this officer being thrown off the sled so the wolves eat him first. I mean, the good news is that if the officer has a competent defense, he ought to be acquitted at trial, um, but he not ought be subject to a trial in the first place, in my opinion. All right, so we do answer questions uh, from the uh, Law of Self-Defense membership in the membership chat. So I'll take a look at that now. I'll answer what questions there are now. Uh, so collectively, we can ben we can all benefit. Even those of you who are non-members can benefit from the answers. Uh, but the only questions we answer are from our members. Uh, Donnie O is in the comments. Hey, Donnie. I hope you saw the uh, Blackstone reference in there. Welcome, everybody. All the usual suspects from the Law of Self-Defense members. Donnie says, I would immediately appeal the probable cause determination by writ of prohibition and ask for a TRO. You may be able to do an interlocutory appeal to a, a court of appeals and get this court's uh, judgment assessed. The trouble is that the appellate courts don't, they really don't like to second guess uh, findings of fact uh, by a hearing judge. The court of appeals don't want to be they don't want to duplicate the role of the hearing judge. They used to do those hearings and then they got promoted and they don't want to do that function anymore. If there's an error in law, they might take the interlocutory appeal, immediate appeal from a trial court decision. Um, but if, if they're able to characterize it as a disagreement on fact, probably not. I, I think this ought to be a legal error here, as I've already explained at length. Uh, but, you know, just like the, there was wiggle room for this hearing judge to decide, no, the facts have to go to the jury, there'd be the same wiggle room for the Court of Appeals. So unless the Court of Appeals had a very, I don't know, different political, politico-legal view uh, of this area of the law, I would not expect uh, such an appeal to be successful. Uh, no probable cause to believe the officer did not have a reasonable belief that he was in imminent danger of great bodily harm, death, or forcible felony. I concur, Donnie. Uh, and Donnie also writes, does it really matter why the suspect was using unlawful force? No. Nope. It doesn't. It doesn't even matter if, uh, if the suspect um, himself had a reasonable belief. Maybe the suspect had been told that an officer of this description was killing people that looked like him in the neighborhood. So, he could argue, I had a reasonable belief I was being subject to an unlawful murder by this officer. Let's pretend that such an understanding would be reasonable. You could arrive at a conclusion that this suspect was legally justified in using deadly force in self-defense, not because he was right about what he believed, but because his belief was reasonable. That in no way diminishes the officer's right to protect himself from the suspect's threat of death or serious bodily injury. Both parties can be right and can be justified. It's not necessary that one of them be wrong. Both of them could be justified in the use of deadly defensive force. That's the way the law works because we don't require certainty because reasonableness is sufficient for the justification. Chris writes, this was my nightmare situation when I was a police. Yeah, folks, just imagine. You think the Grand Rapids Police Department might have trouble recruiting? Moving forward, you think they might start recruiting a bunch of guys like like the the cop who was still on probation who shot the the kid in the car with the hamburger? Because all the senior officers, street officers, are either taking jobs off the street within the department, the academy, headquarters, public affairs, school resource officer, whatever, anything where they'd be unlikely to have to go hands on with the suspect, or retiring, or just quitting, or moving to another department leaving enormous vacancies in the population of street cops within the department that now have to be filled with new recruits? You think we're going to get better decision-making out of new recruits? Recruits that the guys I know working in police academies tell me many of them have never been yelled at before? I don't think so. I think we're going to get worse results, worse decision-making from those young 
sensitive officers. But of course, that serves the purpose of people like Benjamin Crump, right? He lives off of poor decision-making or decision-making by officers he can characterize as poor. That's how he gets multi-million dollar settlements. So the more inexperienced officers making poor decisions, the more millions, tens of millions of dollars Benjamin Crump will collect. Chaos and mayhem are Benjamin Crump's lifeblood. That's how he makes his living. And he's certainly not opposed to more of it. All right, folks, that is, I think that is all I have to share with uh, everybody. Let's see what happened over on uh, Twitter. Mm. Not a lot, not a lot. Our first Twitter stream attempt, it looks like it was technically successful, but there's only four viewers. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for being there on Twitter. I don't know if Twitter just doesn't promote this stuff or what, but uh, it was certainly worth an experiment. We'll try it a few more times. Uh, lots of lots of people in the uh, in uh, Rumble. Oh my gosh, I even got a Rumble rant. I will read that. Uh, five dollars from J Cal. Uh, J Cal, you're really better off instead of you know five dollars for one Rumble, whatever we call that. What do we call that? A Rumble on Rumble. Uh, for ten bucks, you can be a member for the whole month. Ask as many questions as you want in the uh, in the member dashboard. But uh, J Cal asks, "Hey, Brank, I just bought your book the other day. I was hoping if at some point you could explain why USCCA isn't trustworthy. Uh, I could. I'm not going to take the time for that now, but I've written about it in detail. Uh, anyone interested, they can go to lawofselfdefense.com slash USCCA. And I explain there why I feel unable to recommend USCCA any longer as a provider for you know self-defense insurance coverage. Uh, my go-to for that kind of thing is uh, by far uh, CCW Safe, which uh, I think is really uh, an outstanding organization, uh, outstanding team of people. Uh, these things can always change, of course. Uh, it's uh, but the people that CCW Safe has in place are just world class. Between uh, their National Trial Counsel Don West, uh, the homicide investigators, they bring to be your investigators in the aftermath of a use of force event. So. It's not like the only investigators are the ones working for the prosecution, which is normally the case. It's a, just a tremendous team effort they bring to the table. Uh, you can learn more about that. We do have some special offers with them at lawofselfdefense.com slash CCWSAFE. That's who I recommend. That's who I'm a member of. Uh, I'm an ultimate member of CCWSAFE, so is my wife, Emily, as well. And they're currently the only organization I recommend for that purpose, not USCCA. Uh, let's see. And I, I also see someone in the comments mentioning uh, some of the, the Law Shield products. I also, I, I am not comfortable recommending the Law Shield products. I've, I've spoken to those guys. They seem like nice guys, uh, uh, genuinely intending to do good. I, I just don't like how their product is structured. Uh, okay. All right. Well, folks, I think I will wrap up with the uh, now we're going to go to the video. I'm going to show the video, the body worn camera video of the uh, confrontation between uh, the officer, uh, then officer Shore and uh, suspect Leoya. Uh, and then we'll show the uh, what I believe is cell phone camera footage of the of the the final moments of the fight where the actual fatal shot is fired. Uh, but I'm not going to do that on uh I'm going to restrict that to our Law of Self-Defense members only feed. And again, you can become a member right now on lawselfdefense.com slash join. It's only about 30 cents a day, less than 10 bucks a month. And you'll be able to uh, immediately join us on your brand new for you Law of Self-Defense member dashboard. Uh, watch the uh, the live and chat video, um, which is where we're going to be. For those of you who are Law of Self-Defense members, you don't need to go anywhere. Your feed will not be interrupted. Just stay right where you are. Uh, and when we come back, we'll roll through the video. And the whole point of rolling through the video now is that's the evidence. That's the facts here uh, on which the, this judge is saying a reasonable jury could conclude that this was not justified. Not any jury, not a speculative jury, but a reasonable, impartial, unbiased jury could look at this unambiguous evidence and find beyond a reasonable doubt that it was not a justified use of deadly force by this officer. And I simply don't believe that. But you can make your own decision when we come back with the video. All right, YouTube. It's been fun. Talk to you next time. And Twitter, equally fun.